Do not try the following experiments at home. Seriously, don't. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jack. And I'm Donnie. Welcome to Mythbusters Sleep Edition. Today we have two myths about sleep that we'll be looking into. The first myth is that when you are asleep, your brain turns off. The second myth that we'll be testing is that when you are bored, you will fall asleep. Let's go to Dee Dee and Lucas who are in the field with the first myth. Hey guys, welcome to our sleep lab. Today we're going to be experimenting on one of our own, Lucas. Hey, I'm Lucas. So, Lucas, what are those cool cords you've got attached to your head? Well, Dee Dee, these nodes are attached to a special machine called the electroencephalograph, or an EEG. It measures brain waves. So what we're going to do now is measure my brain waves while I'm, I'm awake, and then wait for me to fall asleep and measure my brain waves then. As you can see, the nodes are all collect connected at specific points in my head to measure certain things. Let's see the machine at work. That's Lucas's brain activity while he's awake. Right now, they are showing what we scientists like to call alpha rhythms, which have frequencies between 8 and 13 hertz. When people go to sleep, you can tell by the loss of alpha rhythms in their brain activity. That's pretty cool. Hey Jack, what are some other machines you use to monitor someone's sleep? Well, in polysomnography, there are a number of machines you can use to measure sleep activity. Well, you just saw the EEG, which measures brain activity. We can also measure a lot of things while someone is sleeping. We can measure things like muscle activity through the EMG or electromyogram. We can also measure eye activity with the EOG. Each node is connected to Lucas's head at a specific point. The two nodes by each eye are there to measure eye activity, or EOG, during REM and non-REM sleep. The nodes under Lucas's chin will measure muscle activity with the EMG. They can measure your muscle activity by determining when you lose muscle tone. Now Lucas is going to sleep, and we'll measure his brain waves again. Looks like he has brain activity when he's asleep, too. Myth busted. <laughs> Our next myth is that when you're bored, you fall asleep. See, some people think that boredom induces sleep, so we're going to test that out. We're going to have our lovely assistant Lucas here, who has no sleep yet, sit in a blank room with nothing to do. Boring, right? Sounds like an evening with my ex-wife. <laughs> now Jack, what is sleep debt? Well Donnie, everyone has a certain amount of sleep that they need every night in order to be fully rested. When someone gets less than the full amount of sleep that they need, the time less than they need it accumulates as sleep debt. When someone has sleep debt, they experience sleep deprivation, which can significantly affect health, safety, and quality of life. In order to test sleepiness and sleep debt, the test that is performed for truckers and pilots is the MSLT, or the Multiple Sleep Latency Test, developed by Dr. Dement here at Stanford. This is a test that is performed five times in a day and has the subject close their eyes and try to fall asleep while hooked up to the EEG. This is a controlled experiment to test if sleep is induced by boredom or by sleep debt. In the first trial, we will have Lucas try the MSLT when fully rested and carrying no sleep debt at all. In the second trial, Lucas will perform the same test but will be very sleep deprived. <laughs> at the EEG, Lucas did not fall asleep, which means that he has perfect alertness. Now, let's try Lucas a week later after he has accumulated a significant amount of sleep debt. Lucas! Lucas! 
Lucas. Lucas fell asleep in five minutes, which means he's in the twilight zone of sleep dead. Because Lucas was able to fall asleep during the MSLT only after he had accumulated massive amounts of sleep debt, it must have been sleep debt, not boredom, that caused Lucas to fall asleep, which debunks the myth. Finally, we want to leave our audience with a very important message. Drowsiness is red alert. This means that if you're driving and start to feel drowsy, pull over. Don't keep driving. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration conservatively estimates that 100,000 police reported crashes are the direct result of driver fatigue each year. Last week, my dog Willow was hit and injured by a drowsy driver. Fortunately, she was okay, but it was a wake-up call. Never drive all drowsy, because it's dangerous for you and everyone else on the road. Drowsiness is red alert!